Hello, wonderful family. Another glorious day and another beautiful opportunity to share the word with you. Hallelujah. Today, I just want to round up on what we've taught for some days now about Mark 11, 23, 22, 23, 24, 25. And the bottom line starts from 22, where Jesus says, have faith in God. If you notice... Uh, in Mark eleven twenty three, when he says that whosoever for, says for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he said or shall believe that what he is saying is happening it will be for him do you know that that's exactly what he did each time he performed a miracle Let's now forget about the fig tree and let us look at specific situations. When he says, rise up, take up thy bed and walk, or rise up and walk, he was actually speaking, and while speaking, he believed that what he said was happening. He did not doubt in his heart. So as he did that, he got exactly what he said. When he said to the storm, peace be still, he spoke, not doubting, but believing that as he was speaking, what he was saying was going to be carried, was, was already happening. And he got exactly that. that the, 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 the storm ceased. i give you another instance. Kenny Hagin talked about a, a, a time when um, he had a vision from Jesus, and Jesus told him about how to cast out devils or his ministry with casting out of devils and this particular day he saw this fella who had uh, tuberculosis of the spine which resulted in him having a stiff back he couldn't bend so the guy came for um, healing and Ken Hagen laid his hands on the chap and uh, by uh, he got to find out that this was caused by a demon so he commanded the demon in the name of Jesus to leave the guy's body and then he now told the guy, bend down and see if you can touch your toes. And the guy couldn't bend. Nothing had happened or nothing appeared to have happened. He did this three times and then uh, let the guy go back, assuming that he had failed. Now Jesus now appeared unto him and scolded him and told him, but I told you that if you do this and you order that devil to come out in my name, that he must go. So he said, yes, Lord, you told me this um, not up to a month ago, but I did it and he didn't go. Jesus got a bit angry and told him, but I said he must go. He said, yes, Lord, you told me, but it's not up to a month ago I, you told me, and, but I did it now and he didn't go. In essence, it's as if he didn't understand that he was saying that Jesus lied. And the third time Jesus was very stern and told, put his hand under his nose like that, say, yes, I told you that he would leave. So he, he now uh, understood himself and sent for the man to come back again and told the man the same thing he told him before. No, not the man. He told uh, the demon to get out in the name of Jesus. Now, the only thing that changed was he didn't say, now bend down and see if you can touch your toes. The only difference was he now said, he's gone. That is, he now acted as if, yes, the devil heard him and has gone. And he said, now bend down and touch your toes. Not see if you can touch your toes. Now bend down and touch your toes. That bend down and touch your toes is saying that I believe that that devil has gone. And immediately the man bent down and touched his toes. He was healed instantly. What changed? The only thing that changed was the fact that prior to that time, he was not convinced there was some doubt. It says if. If is a, um, what do you call it now in mathematics? It's a, fun it's a function in mathematics that, that uh, talks about two differing opinions. It's saying if means it is either this or that. It's, it's a condition. If is not saying it is. It is saying it may be. So you are giving room for another opinion. That was his albatross and that was enough for the devil to stay put he's a legalist he's a legalist 
Now, that's with respect to Mark 11, uh, 23, 24, where he says, Whosoever shall, or rather, he says, where, Therefore, when ye pray, believe that ye receive. Believe that you have received. That's, in essence, believe that God has given it to you. That is, believe that God did not lie to you when he said that ask and he will give it to you. So he's saying, believe God that he has given it, that he's, he told the truth. And what is the truth there that he has given it to you? Believe that you have received it. You are now saying, Lord, you didn't lie. You gave it to me. I believe you gave it to me. He says, at that point in time, that you will get it. Now, you will means that it is some futuristic thing. It's not, it doesn't necessarily mean it's instantaneous. But it is saying that you will get it. Not that you may get it. It will come by and by. Praise God. Then the, the final part, where he talks about uh, forgiveness. Say, so if you have ought against anyone, if you, you should forgive them. Whatever issue you have against anyone, forgive them. Then that's the way your faith works. I'll remove forgiveness, remove love faith is powerless no matter the amount of faith you have it's powerless it's useless god bless you hallelujah